All right, so the last thing we're gonna talk about is partial pressure or the law of partial pressure. I think it sounds a little bit more intimidating than it is. Um, so bear with me before we go over some examples. It's basically that the total pressure of a gas mixture. So let's say we had a mixture of two different gases, nitrogen and oxygen. The total pressure would actually just be the sum of whatever the pressure of nitrogen is plus the pressure of the oxygen, okay? The, the, the big thing here is that the identity of the gas is completely irrelevant. It wouldn't matter if it was nitrogen or argon or xenon, it doesn't have any bearing on the pressure of that gas, okay? This is a really good illustration of the law of partial pressures. Let's say that we had two different containers that were at two different pressures. So let's say that this was our nitrogen gas and this was our oxygen gas, okay? The nitrogen's at some pressure here, the oxygen's at a little bit higher of a pressure. And then you were to combine these two gases into the same container. What you would find is that the pressure of that gas would just be a simple sum of what you started out with. Okay, and so what we're gonna do is, let's say that we have these mixed gas problems. What we're gonna do is we're kinda gonna say like, all right, what's the total pressure of this system? Well, first let's ignore all these pink ones, calculate it for the one gas, and then ignore all these orange ones, calculate it for the pink gas, and then we're just gonna sum them up. Okay, so it's, it, it's kind of an intimidating sounding concept that's actually pretty easy in practice, okay? So let's do an example here. And actually I'm gonna sort of, I'm not a great drawer, but I'm gonna draw it out so we get a sense of what's going on here. We have a one liter vessel, cool. And it contains 0.215 moles of nitrogen and 0.0118 moles of helium at 25 degrees Celsius. Determine the partial pressure of each component and the total pressure of the vessel, all right? So first of all, I have some nitrogen gas and I have some hydrogen gas, not quite as much, right? So I'm gonna draw fewer dots here, okay? And I wanna figure out what the total pressure of this system is, as well as the partial pressure of each one of these gases. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna make it into two separate problems. In the first problem, I'm gonna ignore all of the hydrogen in there. So I'm gonna pretend like this is a vessel that's one liter and contains 0.215 moles of nitrogen at 25 degrees Celsius and completely ignore the fact that there's hydrogen in there altogether. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here, but now I'm gonna ignore the fact that there's nitrogen. So I'm gonna pretend like, again, we have a one liter vessel but with 0 0.0188 moles of hydrogen at 25 degrees Celsius, okay? So how would I get the pressure of this system here? Well, I would just use my ideal gas equation, PV equals NRT. Uh, I'm gonna move, since we've been doing this algebra kind of for a while, I'm not gonna do it two step by step. I'm gonna just, say that when I rearrange it, I get pressure equals NRT over V. So then I'm gonna plug in the number of moles. So again, this is the N2, this is the H2, is 0 0.215 moles times R. If I go to my constants page, it wouldn't really matter which value I chose as long as I stuck with it. Uh, again, we kind of default to this one here. 0 0.082058 ATM liters per mole Kelvin times T. And let's not make the mistake of not converting to Kelvin. 
gases, gas equations, always Kelvin. You can already see, I'm not gonna leave myself enough room. So 273.15 plus 25 is the 298, whoops, 98.15. And I'm gonna mark that sig figs as three sig figs divided by the volume, which was 1.00 liters. So the pressure of the nitrogen, punch that into my calculator, I get 5.2601. Um, going for units, moles will cancel, oops. Should be a K on the end there. Kelvins will cancel, liters will cancel. So I'm left with ATM. And then in terms of sig figs, I have three here, three here, five here, and three here. So that would be three. I'm, I'm just gonna leave it marked for now because I might want to use that unrounded number here shortly. I'm gonna have to shrink this though. Okay, so now over here for the hydrogen, I'm again, just gonna pretend like I have a problem that where nitrogen doesn't even exist. And all I care about is the pressure of the hydrogen gas, which is again, equal to NRT over V or number of moles, 0 0.0118 moles times R. R is just so giant with its units. Oops. Hold up. ATM liter per mole Kelvin. Trying to mess that up. Times the 298.15 Kelvin divided by the 1.00 liters, right? The vessel was the same, the temperature was the same. The difference was just the number of moles of gas in each of these. Let me shrink this because I'm running out of room. Cool, all right. So then punch that into my calculator and I get that the partial pressure of the hydrogen in this system is 0 0.28869. Going through and paying attention to units, moles cancel, Kelvin cancels, liters cancel, and I'm left with ATM. For sig figs, this value has three, five, three, and three. So I take whichever one's fewer, which is the three. So that's that there, okay? So for the partial pressure of each of them, if that's the, you know, uh, the value that I'm reporting, now I can round to the correct number of sig figs. So in this case, the partial pressure of nitrogen is 5.26 ATM and the partial pressure of hydrogen is 0 0.289 ATM. That would be my final answer for that. If I wanna know the total pressure, well, remember that the, part, the pressure total is just going to be the sum of those partial pressures. And for this, I need to use my unrounded values. That's why I made a point of keeping those on the screen. So now the total pressure, so this is my total system is going to be my 5.2601 ATM plus 0 0.28869 ATM, where that's my sig fig. Remember the rules for carrying sig figs in addition you mark your sig figs and whichever one is further to the left, that's the position that the sig fig needs to be in in your final answer. So when I add them all up, I get 
five, four, eight, seven, nine, five, four, five, four, eight, seven, nine ATM. Marked to the correct number of sig figs, my total pressure would be 5.55 ATM. Okay, so again, I took this problem and at first I just completely ignored that there was a mixture of gases. I treated it as if there was just nitrogen, which was just an ideal gas uh, problem like we did in the ideal gas lecture. I then did it as if it was just hydrogen, again, treating it just as an ideal gas, and then took those two partial pressures and summed them up to get the total pressure. Okay. The last concept that we got to talk about with regard to partial pressures is this idea of mole fractions, okay? Um, a mole fraction is, it's, it's almost like a percentage except for you don't multiply by 100, okay? So for example, this special X thingy here, it's called chai, doesn't matter. This is saying that the mole fraction of some components, so let's say that we were talking about in our previous example, let me get rid of it here too, nitrogen gas, if I wanted to get the mole fraction of nitrogen in that sample, I would just take it and divide it, the number of moles of nitrogen divided by the total number of moles of gas, okay? Or I could do the same thing with the hydrogen, take the number of moles of hydrogen, or the partial pressure for hydrogen, take the number of moles of hydrogen gas and divide it by the total number of moles. Okay, the partial pressure or the mole fraction is also equal to the partial pressure of each gas divided by the pressure total. So if I wanted to find, a, you know, another equivalent way of finding the mole fraction of nitrogen in that sample would have been to take the pressure of the nitrogen and divide it by the pressure total. Okay. Uh, if we just want to, and, th and then we could see that the partial pressure of each component should all sum up to one. So again, going back to our previous example, this would be, uh, and if you had more than two gases, you would add them all up. In this case, we just had two, so let's get rid of this. This would be for our previous example, N2 plus H2. If we calculated those mole fractions, they would add up to one. So let's actually go ahead and do that for our previous example, kind of convince ourselves that these equations aren't full of crap here, okay? So first of all, let's use the values given, which was this information here. Okay, so this was just what was given in the problem that we had 0.2, 0 0.0, I'm sorry, 0.215 moles of nitrogen and these little distracting tidbits out of here and 0.0118 moles of hydrogen in our mixture. So we're gonna calculate the mole uh, fraction of nitrogen and the mole fraction of hydrogen for uh, this particular mixture. And what we need to do is get the total number of moles, which would just be what I got if I summed 0.215 and 0 0.0118 together. Can I do this in my head? Let's see. That looks right. Okay, so this is moles N2, this is moles H2 and this is moles total. So if I wanted to get the mole fraction of each of these, I would take the 0 0.215 divided and I, if we're being good, we can mark sig figs, although sig figs aren't a hugely important part of these types of problems, 0 0.2268. Zero point. 0.0118 divided by 0 0.2268. 
Okay, so punching these into our calculator. For our mole fraction of nitrogen, we would get 0 0.94797. You can mark that with three sig figs. And for our mole fraction of hydrogen, we would get 0 0.05202. Eight. Again with three sig figs. And these would be the mole fractions for each of these different components. Um, so you could kind of it, sort of equivalent of saying that in terms of moles, this sample is 94.79% uh, nitrogen and 5.20% hydrogen, right? So that's kind of this idea. And then likewise, one of the other relationships, which is really important, is that if I took the sum of my mole fractions, I would get one. And you can indeed convince yourself that that's the case if you take these two values and sum them up. Okay. The other thing is that it said not only if we took the number of moles, but there was the other equation where if we took the partial pressure of each of them divided by the total pressure, we would also get these same values. So let's make sure that we can convince ourselves that that is indeed true. We're going to go back to what we got for this problem. Um, I'm going to copy all this and then clean it up. Okay, so here was what we got for the total pressure. Do I have the unrounded? Oops, let me get the unrounded version. Always want to use the unrounded values. I mean, honestly, you'll see that sometimes it doesn't make a difference, but sometimes it does. And it's unfortunate to get something wrong just because you used a rounded value when you should have used an unrounded value. Anytime you're punching something into your calculator, you don't want it to have been rounded. Okay, so this is what we calculated from that problem. If you don't really remember how we got these values, you can go back and we rewatch that portion of the video. I don't wanna explain it again, but the bottom line is this is what we got for the total pressure as well as the partial pressure of each one of these gases. So we can get again, the mole fraction of nitrogen is equal to 5.2601 divided by five, and again, let me mark my sig fig, 5.54879. And then the mole fraction of hydrogen. Oops. All right, so if we punch these into our calculators, we should get these same values that we got up top, All right? So it doesn't matter whether you start by using the number of moles or by using the, um, the partial pressure. All right, and indeed you get 0 0.947 nine, seven, and 0 0.052028. Right, so using either one of those two methods, we got the same value for those mole fractions, okay? Um, so we could just, so really what we're just doing is convincing ourselves that these equations that are given, which are gonna be really important, are, uh, are, are true, these, these, this all works out, all pans out here. So let's now look at a problem where this sort of thing is gonna be important. Okay. Um, so turns out that nitrous oxide can be used to treat, lung de, 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 uh, to treat lung disease in premature infants, which is a problem of infants that are um, born prematurely. Uh, they don't have the same sort of immune responses that um, 
infants do that are a little bit further along in their development. So in order to prevent any sort of lung disease from occurring, you can give them a mixture of nitrogen and nitro uh, nitrogen monoxide. So we're gonna figure out what the, ultimately we're gonna figure out what the mole fraction of nitrogen monoxide is in this mixture, but we're gonna calculate it using these given values. So a 10 liter gas cylinder at room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, contains 6.200 moles of nitrogen, and it has a pressure of 14.75 atm, a total pressure of 14.75 atm. What is the mole fraction of nitrogen? So that's step one. We know how many moles of, no, of nitrogen it contains, but we don't know the total number of moles of gas yet. We do know the total pressure. So if we take our PV equals NRT and we solve for N, since the pressure that we're talking about is the total pressure, solving this equation with the variables given will give us the total number of moles. So the number of moles of nitrous, uh, nitrogen plus the, nit plus the number of moles of nitrogen monoxide. So plugging these values in, 14.75 atm times 10.00 liters divided by our value for R. And again, I'm gonna use this particular one because it has the proper units times 25 degrees Celsius. But of course I have to convert that to Kelvin. I'm gonna kind of speed things up here and do that quickly. If I solve this equation, punching this into my calculator, I get that the total number of moles is equal to 6.02887. Again, this is total. So what's the mole for, uh, I guess just to be really good, let's go back and worry about sig figs. This is four, four. My temperature only has three. So here we go, our first mixed sig fig problem should only have three, but of course when I'm going to calculate my mole fraction of nitrogen, I'm gonna use my unrounded value. Oops. And we would get that the mole fraction of nitrogen plugging this in 0 0.99885 with three sig figs. Uh, just note that mole fractions are actually unitless quantities. Moles will cancel. I won't be left with anything. So yeah, so my final mole fraction would be 0 0.999 for nitrogen, for N2. How would I figure out the mole fraction of so, that, so that's part A, check, figured out the mole fraction of the nitrogen. What about the mole fraction for the nitrogen monoxide? Well, I know that the sum of those would be one. So all I have to do is take one and subtract my 0 0.99885 and I would get the mole fraction for nitrogen monoxide, which would be 0 0.00114, rounded to that many sig figs, because I have my sig fig in the thousandth place here. I'm gonna leave myself a ton of room, shrink this down. All right, and actually just to, let me, let me stack these up the right way so everybody can see. One, 
minus 0 0.99885. That one is exact, so it's not gonna limit my sig figs at all. So this answer will have sig figs in that place there. So the mole fraction of nitrogen monoxide would be 0 0.001. So a tiny, teeny, tiny amount of nitrogen monoxide in that sample. Um, but nonetheless, we were able to calculate that using this theory of partial pressures.